Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mangus, and I welcome you guys to the very first installment of Mangus Monday. If you don't know, this is a show where I'll be talking about some uh, gaming-related news, as well as read some mail and have a good time. I'm looking very much forward to doing this, and I hope you guys will enjoy the show. In today's news and update segments, I'm going to be talking about a uh, new Fire Emblem hack called Fire Emblem Binding Blade Rebirth. It is made by Deal Luna, the same guy who made Fire Emblem 6 Redux. I have a few episodes of that on my channel if you want to go check it out. It's a uh, pretty old hack, but it's a really good one that just changes a lot of the growth rates of many of the Fire Emblem 6 characters and retunes the game, making it a little bit less harsh in the beginning and greatly ramping up the difficulty towards the end. So this is a hack inspired by that, I think. And uh, instead of just brushing up the game, it's actually going to add a lot of new features to it. Um, Dio Luna's main goals for the project, according to himself, is it's going to have improved and more varied gameplay, including new units, weapons, and classes inspired from other Fire Emblem games and hacks. It's going to have new chapters, which follows Guniver's side story prior to meeting Roy. It's going to have expanded scripts and characterization, with main story events having much more character involvements. <laughs> Death checks ahoy, he also says. <laughs> Uh, and also, revamped map design were appropriate, as well as varied objectives. And this all sounds really promising, because if there's one problem Fire Emblem 6 had, it's generally tedious map design, as well as every single map being a Tron capture, which is, you know, gets a little bit tedious. I would love to have a couple of defense chapters, you know, just, you know, spicing it up a little bit. And of course, more Gunavere is always a good thing, because I love that freaking chick. She is hot, 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 hot. Um, so yeah, I'll definitely be checking this hack out, uh, and uh, I'm also going to try to get my hands on an early alpha release. We'll see if the Luna wants to oblige me, but I'll, I've sent him a message and asked for it, so we'll see how it's going to go. So yeah, keep your uh, eyes posted for the new Fire Emblem hack on the horizon. Rebirth, certainly looking forward to it. Hope it's going to be great. Knowing the Luna, it probably will. So now we come to the part of the show where I'm going to be showcasing one of my old Let's Plays from the past. A lot of you guys often ask me, Hey Manx, do you ever play something else than just turn-based strategy games? And yes, in fact I do. Um, today I'm going to be showing you guys my Diablo 1 Let's Play that I made about two years back. It is actually the only four-player call-up Let's Play that I have on my channel. And it features myself, Cyril, Cyril's brother Zayu, who's also a Let's Player, and our good friend Scheidman, who kind of just tagged along for the ride. These are guys that I frequently played D&D with, and uh, we ended up having pretty good synergy, and I was really happy with how the Let's Play turned out. Diablo 1 in itself is a jewel from the past. You may have heard about Diablo 2 and even Diablo 3, but Diablo 1 isn't that wildly recognized. Uh, and that's actually a shame, because this game is really good. Of course, by today's standard, it is pretty old, clunky, and outdated, but I do have a love for retro games. It is extremely difficult, much more difficult than its predecessors. No! You gotta be fucking joking me! I'm trapped! I'm trapped! I can't get... Oh my god, I'm dead. Uh, well, it's a good idea, pulling King Larry with no healing potions and... and and the multiplayer aspect of this game is also hilarious because uh, it includes friendly fire, so you end up hitting each other a lot, much to the sorcerer's dismay. Um, but it created some potentially hilarious situations and uh, a lot of funny moments. Like, I'm just going to say that there aren't many Let's Plays of Diablo 1 on YouTube, and that's simply because frapsing this game is an absolute bitch. You need to download, like, patches and external software. And getting four player together in the same uh, game is also a nightmare, because Diablo 1 is old, and it doesn't really have a LAN function. You kind of have to use Hamachi as well as a patch to make it work. Um, the Let's Play itself is 12 parts long. We did kill Diablo. Uh, but we didn't quite get to Hell. If you know Diablo, it has three difficulties, Normal, Nightmare, and Hell. We almost got all the way to Hell, uh, but then the summer vacation ended, and so did our Let's Play. But I have uh, recently uh, thought about reviving this Let's Play, because I was really happy with how it went. Just a matter of getting all four people back together and, uh, you know, starting to record it. 
So yeah, I'll be uh, including a link, link, link actually, uh, link in the video description if you guys want to go check out my uh, collab Diablo 1 Let's Play. And uh, you can also see it from the perspective of the sorcerer if you so wish. I'll be throwing a link to uh, Zayo's channel in the video description as well. And uh, I hope you guys will at least go and check it out if that's interesting to you. Incest. My skeleton is skeleton. Wait, what? Incest? <laughs> yeah. No, it's a blade of zest. Well, it just blade of incest only... plus five. <laughs> That's the creepiest sword ever. <laughs> hey, a cloak. You guys. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Plus five against the siblings. <laughs> <laughs> Then we come to the segment of the show where I'm going to be showcasing someone who made me laugh this week. And that particular individual was Luke Hadison with his comments regarding the Fire Emblem Path of Radiance map where you fight inside Oliver's Mansion where I complained about tedious map design. And Luke Hadison says, such map design, so wastes, much linear. <laughs> well played, sir. And we come to the part of the show where we're going to be looking at some pretty faces. It's Fire Emblem Babe of the Week. So I had a little bit of a difficulty uh, choosing what girl to pick as my first one. <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, but I decided I had to pick a girl from Fire Emblem 9 since I've recently started playing that game for the first time. And god, there's so many pretty ones there and I, I'm having a hard time picking one. But after giving it a little bit of thought, I decided that I would go with this chick, Nefni. So. Most Fire Emblem babes have a very distinct kind of hotness to them, but Nefni is very unique because I can't just place my finger on exactly why I like her so much. Yeah, sure, she has great legs, she has a very pretty face and all that, but there's just something adorable about this chick. She's kind of like got the whole girl next door vibe kind of going on. I don't know, she's just so lovable. I just want to pick her up and hug her. Um, normally I'm not a big fan of green hair, but on her it just looks amazing. I, I don't think that she would have been as hot if she had like blue or even blonde hair. I think that the green hair was just a perfect fit for her. Uh, she wears her armor like an absolute champ. Her legs are amazing. She has an amazing body. And, you know, Nefni is uh, definitely worthy of being the very first Fire Emblem Babe of the Week. Who do you want to see as the next Fire Emblem Babe of the Week? Let me know in the comment section. And now we come to the part in the show where I'm going to be reading some mail. So the first mail comes in from Outraged Maple and he says, Hey Mangs, I'm a really big fan of your videos. My favorite Let's Play you've done has to be Fire Emblem 5. I mean, it would be Fire Emblem 4, but I was surprised to see you not finish it. I know you had plans to make it again when the translation patch can, comes out. So my question is, what Let's Plays do you want to do? And do you have any plans on making Let's Plays of a different series not yet posted to your channel? Thank you if you read this and keep up the great job. You bring us all entertainment each and every day. Outraged Maple. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, thank you, really. Uh, it really means a lot to me. Um... Yeah, I'm glad you like my Fire Emblem 5 Let's Play. That's uh, one of the Let's Plays I've enjoyed the most making. Such a great game, really. Uh, it really needs more recognition. I would love a fucking remake of Fire Emblem 5. Uh, it is uh, really a very interesting piece of game. Maybe a little bit clunky in certain areas, but its uniqueness uh, gave it a lot of uh, originality and uh, flavor. I, I really, really enjoyed playing it. Really sorry about not completing Fire Emblem 4, I know it's a travesty, really. I would have completed the Shin Patch, the, the thing is that um, I tried to download the Shin Patch again, uh, but whenever I tried to apply it to an emulator, it crashed. Uh, I don't really know why, um, if something happened to it or if I was just using the wrong emulator. I tried many different emulators and I tried many different Fire Emblem 4 rooms, and every time I applied it to a room, it just crashed. Uh, because, as you may know, I lost my save game. I actually had intended to play the entire game up to the very last chapter and then resume my Let's Play, kind of like I did with the Fire Emblem 7 Let's Play. But, um, yeah, just couldn't do that. So instead I made the Substitute run. But that had its own problems, and now I'm pretty much just waiting for the translation patch to be complete. But I have no idea when it's actually going to come out. So, we'll have to see. Um, so yeah, uh, what kind of Let's Plays do I want to do? Well, the plan is as follows. 
right? Um, I want to have a let's play of every single official Fire Emblem game on the channel. I've already done Fire Emblem 1. I plan to do Fire Emblem Gaiden, although that doesn't quite have a very high priority. But I am going to be making a let's play of Ga Gaiden eventually. I have made a let's play of Fire Emblem 3, albeit only book 2, but I think that's okay. I don't really see the need to make a let's play of book 1. Because I kind of already have with my Fire Emblem 1 let's play, and it's the same story. Um... I will eventually complete Fire Emblem 4, I have completed Fire Emblem 5, I have completed Fire Emblem 6 as well as 7. I am going to be making a Fire, uh, Fire Emblem 8 Let's Play as well, in the not too distant future. And I'm currently working on Fire Emblem 9, and I'm probably going to do Fire Emblem 10 as well once I'm done with 9, because I'm really in love with the Teles series at the moment. And then, probably at some point, uh, maybe going to play Fire Emblem uh, 11 and 12. You know, the thought has crossed my mind, they're really great games. and then perhaps Awakening when I get a, a 3DS capture board. So yeah, that is really the plan, and uh, I'm also going to be continuing with my Civilization playthroughs because they have been getting more popular as of late, and probably going to be reviewing a lot more hacks as well. Uh, as far as going into something that's completely new, I still haven't thought about it. Um, once Cyril uh, gets into a position where he can start doing collab Let's Plays with me, he just needs to move his current gaming rig. Um, I am perhaps planning on delving into something completely new uh, that I've never done before. Maybe something that's not strategy, but, you know, we'll have to see. I, to, truth be told, I haven't really thought about it so much, so we're going to have to see. Anyway, thank you for your email. I really appreciate it. So the second email comes in from Ruth McNally, and he says, Hi Mangs, I'm glad to see this new feature on your channel to start. You're one of the few Let's Players that I am subscribed to, as your content stands out, and also because of your enjoyment of turn-based strategy games. I remember when I first got interested in Advanced Wars from a video about Advanced Wars campaign, Combice Error. Ooh, I hate that map. I looked up uh, Advanced Wars on YouTube, and uh, what did I find but your Advanced Wars 2 hard mode let's play. I watched the whole thing and went on to watch your Advanced Wars 1 Advanced Wars campaign let's play. After that I saw your Days of Ruin let's play had started so I watched parts uploaded and thus with the good impressions I got from the let's plays I subscribed. Although my current college life has left me with less free time, amen brother, I still make sure to keep up with your videos, and even though I can't watch all of them, I can be certain to look at the channel updates, as well as pretty much everything Advanced Wars related. As of this writing, I still haven't finished being amused by your 12 days of Advanced Wars. Yeah, thank you truly. So yeah, uh, I'm aware I got a lot of Advanced Wars fans on my channel that subbed primarily for Advanced Wars content, and I feel really bad for not making more of it, because I do love the game. I, I, I do think that Advanced Wars is my all-time favorite game, even probably higher up than Fire Emblem. The problem is that it's so much easier to create Fire Emblem content, because there's so many more Fire Emblem games out than there are Advanced Wars games. Um, but uh, the thing about Advanced Wars is that sometimes I really get in an Advanced Wars mood, and I really just record a whole shit ton of Advanced Wars content at once, and then I kind of need a little bit of a break from it. Uh, whereas Fire Emblem is so varied, I can just, you know, make different games, uh, do different hacks, you know, there's so much variety, but I promise you that I will in the future uh, keep continuing to make Advanced Wars 2 content, so I'm not going to be done doing it for the foreseeable future. So I'm going to be making sure my Advanced Wars subscribers will uh, get their share of entertainment as well. Thanks for the mail, I really appreciate it. And uh, good luck with your college, man. Uh, do your homework and uh, don't slack on your studies. Yeah. Hi, Mangs. I love the new series idea. Please, could you explain how progress on Exalted Legacy is going and where I can find the latest patch? Since the one I found had Marcus Sprite replacing Jagans. Also, please consider Let's Playing it because I think it would be a great boost for your channel. Many thanks, Gregor Aubrey. Uh, yeah, so, uh, in case you don't know, a while back, uh, I uh, showcased a hack called Exalted Legacy, uh, together with Ray, aka Mage Knight, and the creator of the hack, Arch. Um, basically, Exalted Legacy is a Fire Emblem 1 remake for, uh, I think it uses the Fire Emblem 8 engine, I can't remember, I think it's the Fire Emblem 8 engine, but yeah, we did it for Fire Emblem E3, uh, this year's Fire Emblem E3. And uh, we used a patch that has not yet been released to the public. I sent a message to Arch upon receiving this mail a couple of days ago. And I asked him, hey, uh, how's the progress going on the patch? Because the last time he updated the thread on Serene's Forest was July 2014. 
Um, but I still haven't gotten any response. In fact, I haven't seen Arch online on Skype for like a week now, so I'm not really sure. Maybe he's on vacation or something. But yeah, uh, I'll be sure to uh, uh, give you guys an update in an upcoming Manx Monday as soon as I get word from Arch about what's really going on with the Exalt Legacy. I also asked Ray, he had no idea. Um, so yeah, uh, currently you can't get the patch that we played uh, during the Let's Play. It was an exclusive patch that I think Arch sent to Ray, and it is yet to be released to the public. So you can't get it! But I can promise you guys that once this game is out, I will definitely let's play it, because it was a really fucking amazing hack. It was really well made. Great sprites, and such an original take on a Fire Emblem 1 let's play, uh, or a Fire Emblem 1 remake. It's simply not just the maps from Fire Emblem 1 uh, into the Fire Emblem uh, 8 engine, because that would have been pretty boring. Uh, Arch really took an original twist on it. For example, the second map, which is supposed to be taking part in a port town, uh, you know, it, that, that's the lore behind it, but the Fire Emblem, uh, or the uh, NES engine was so bad, they couldn't really make a port town uh, background. But what Arch has gotten done is that he actually converted the second map into a fucking port town, you know, using the pirate uh, sprites from uh, Fire Emblem 8, of course. Um, and, uh, you know, just, just really made great changes to the game overall. Included some characters from the remake and shit like that. It's really amazing. And uh, if you haven't watched my review of it, together with Ray and uh, Arch, you should really go watch it. I'll, uh, I'll make sure to put a link to it in the video description if you want to check it out. So, yeah, thank you for the mail. Really appreciate it. So that's all the time we have this week for mail. If you want to get your mail read out on the show, then email in at mangs at cyril at gmail.com and label your mail Mangus Monday. Um, feel free to send in fan art and other stuff as well. Questions are all fine, but if you want something you want showcased on the show, then feel free to send it to me. Uh, you can add attachments, or you can simply just send me links, and I will check it out. So, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this mail segment. So that wraps up the first episode of Mangus Monday. I hope you guys have enjoyed this little show that I put together. Uh, I certainly put a lot of effort into making it, so I'm very interested in hearing your feedback on it. So please post your thoughts, comments, ideas, and criticism in the comments section below. Um, if you have any ideas for other things I can do on this show, I'd love to hear it. Please consider giving it a like if you enjoyed it, or a dislike if you hated it. It all matters the same at the end of the day anyway. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there might be another Mangs Monday coming up soon. But until then, my name is Min Mangs, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. <laughs>